think there are really two rationals. One is, is the general rational uh, of pursuing biomarker research in regards to autoantibodies in MS, and the other is then the question why we're looking specifically into IgA and not IgG, which is currently, you know, the gold standard for like antibody discovery and pathophysiology. So in regard to the first question, I think one of the current biggest challenges uh, in neuroimmunology is really to stratify um, the disease within the spectrum of what we call multiple sclerosis and NMOSD and really to carve out um, subclinical phenotypes that then help us to tailor treatment decision. And I think in this regard, the biggest advancements in the past 10 years has been the identification of Vacopan 4 and MOG IgG in a subgroup of patients, along with the um, a description of the disease entities, NMOSD and MOGAD. And this has really led to serological diagnoses and then also to more tailored therapies for the subgroup of patients. But we are still left with this um, large patient collections of patients with multiple sclerosis and an NMSD phenotypes that are very heterogeneous, that we clinically see, we see that in treatment response, and we don't have good biomarkers um, that tell us more about the pathophysiology that would guide us in treatment decision. And this is really one of the core motivators from our lab to look for novel autoantibodies because we are convinced that most likely there will be more autoantibodies that will help stratify similar to what we see to autoimmune encephalitis patients. And so one of the main avenues in the lab is to look for novel um, targets of autoantibodies. So that is the general perception of where that falls in, in the challenge of neuroimmunology. And then kind of why are we looking at IgA? And I have to say here, there are kind of two tracks uh, in my career or my scientific path that, I, that have come together. And first is that I spent my doctoral degree where we um, described MOG antibodies in children with a cell-based assay, so I have a long-standing interest in MOGAD and also now as a, a trained neurologist, um, we are running a, um, a separate clinic to really look at these patients in detail. And then I spent my postdoctoral work looking at um, microbiota B-cell interaction at UCSF and that, that really prompted my attention to, to antibodies and B cells that are sitting in the gut that have been really rather ignored in terms of studying their function in neuroimmunology. So tying these two things together and coming back, you know, from my postdoc, the first idea I had in my lab, I said, why don't we start also looking for autoantibodies that may have a mucosal origin and have microbiota origin? This is where our attention turned to IgA. And so for those of um, you who are not, you know, hardcore immunologists are not familiar what, you know, what is, what is IgA. So we have different types of B cells and antibodies. And one is IgG, which is, I think well known. It's systemically, it's mounted when we get vaccinated. It protects us from infections. And IgA are really B cells and antibodies that are produced at the mucosal linings, like in the gut and also the lungs. And, um, and the gut, these, these antibodies have a big role in being a first line barrier to pathogens and infections. And so, of course, now thinking about the role of microbiota, you know, in neuroimmunological diseases, we were quite interested in bringing that together and saying, well, could there be autoreactive antibodies that are rather of the IgA isotype? And this was the first um, undertaking that my first master's student in my group, Laila Kulswahagen, who's also co shared author of the work, has spearheaded and shows she has developed an essay to, to screen for these antibodies. And we did an initial screen in like some 350 patients from the University of Basel that we had collected in our biobank with different demyelinating syndromes. And she could identify a small subset of patients that really harbored these antibodies in the absence of Acopon 4 and MOG IgG. And so that then prompted us to. Um, consolidate this finding. And so I reached out to uh, collaborators in Germany, in Bochum, uh, Berlin, and Düsseldorf. And uh, we also happened to have uh, set up a wonderful collaboration with the University of Sao Paulo and had Anna Gomez, the second core first author uh, from their center, come to us also with um, a biobank collection of patients with NMOSD um, phenotypes. And so we screened several other cohorts coming up then with a total of almost uh, 1,400 patients screened for MOG IgA. And so it turns out in, in the end, we have 18 patients that harbor isolated IgA antibodies in the absence of Acupon 4 and MOG IgG with a demyelinating syndrome. And then that prompted us to say, well, are there specific clinical features, you know, that are associated with this antibody? And um, this is, you know, where then the story developed. <laughs> 